Right, you're joining me down here um, at my local members lake in the heart of Dorset. Um, it's a lake um, I've pretty much fallen in love with really. Um, about 25 years ago I caught my very first fish here um, when it used to be a trout farm. I don't know a great deal about what happened in the years in between um, but it's been stocked at some point with some very very nice carp. Um, and about four years ago a new owner took over, completely revamped the place, um, cut everything back because it had gone a bit wild, put an otter fence in. The, it's really really nice place to be um, and a nice place to fish. Uh, the lake that I'm fishing, um, the back lake, I would say has about 70 to 80 fish. Um, it's probably a makeup of about 50 original mirror and common carp, um, both going up to mid 30s. Um, I'd say there's about 15 or so grass carp, uh, the biggest of which has come in last year, just over 50 pounds. Uh, and there's actually a couple of um, blue carp um, Asian blue carp, um, which is a, a novelty. I don't think there's many lakes uh, that stop them in the UK. So the lake's about three and a half acres in size. Only four anglers allowed on at any given time. Um, there's a massive island in the middle. Um, so it doesn't matter where you fish from, every angler has got a nice bit of space. But there's one big dominating feature in every single angle of the lake, and that's the weed. Very, very aggressive weed, um, which can be quite intimidating for some anglers. Um, but I've had a few results um, on this lake. Um, I've been fishing it for about the last year and a half, and uh, I'm pretty confident with today's approach, um, which I'll show you shortly. We should hopefully um, nick a bite. Right, we've just had a bit of commotion down here. Um, one of the swans has just kicked right off, um, swam halfway across the lake, flapping his wings all over the place, um, scared some coots and geese that were kind of near my spot, wiped out pretty much uh, two rods there. So I thought it was a pretty good time to get one of the rods out, um, show you the rig and talk through it and explain um, why, I'm, why I'm using it. I use a clear safe zone leader. Um, reason being is it kind of blends into any bottom, silt, gravel, uh, weed, uh, it just kind of becomes invisible in the water. Um, that's using a lead clip system and uh, for this situation it's literally ever so slightly pushed onto the clip um, so that if we get a take um, it'll drop the lead and the fish will come right up to the surface. It makes it a lot easier to play it and there's a lot less chance that it will bury itself in the weed and, and get it up high as quickly as possible. Um, I've got a sh reasonably short hook link, um, coated braid. Uh, this tail rubber just kicks it off the lead to kind of avoid um, any, any kind of tangling if I was casting that out. A bit of putty to weigh it down. Um, and, and pretty much every fish I've done on this lake has been a high-vis fluoro pop-up. Uh, so I've got, I'm using pink today, uh, but white, yellow, um, all, all works. I trust all of it really. Um, so yeah, nice and simple. Carp absolutely love being in the weed. They feel safe and protected. Also, it contains a lot of natural food sources and insects, um, which is probably why they've grown on to get so big in this lake. Thirdly, as the sunlight hits the weed, uh, it creates oxygen via photosynthesis. However, in the evening, uh, it has the reverse effect and draws in um, the oxygen. So you'll find that during the daytime, the fish love to be in the weed. As it gets darker um, during the nighttime, they love to come into the clearer patches, into the margins, on the, on the edge of the weed really. And uh, it's something that we've spotted in the last couple of days. Um, here as well. So we've, we've been out on the boat uh, in the sunshine, seen, seen the fish basking. I've been keeping a log of all the shows that we've seen and all the tops and, and again during the daytime it's been right in the thick of the weed. During the evening in the margins and the clear patches. So what I've done is use this um, kind of information to um, do a two-pronged attack if you like. So during the daytime we'll focus on uh, fishing in the weed during the evening, 
we'll find the clearer spots on the margins. So we'll, we'll, we'll do two different approaches. Um, unfortunately today, um, it's coming to a bit of an end. Um, we, we've had the baits on really good spots. Um, we've kind of worked hard to get them out there and unfortunately it just hasn't happened. Um, and yesterday was a bit of a write off with the weather as well, which made it tricky. So it's not been easy. Um, but what, what we've done um, is just headed out now um, as it approaches the evening and dropped in uh, the rods kind of I've put a couple around the island um, into, onto nice gravel in, and also one down here um, there's also a hole out in the middle um, that we're pretty confident with so uh, fingers crossed we'll see what the night brings and the other thing is as well as they've only recently spawned in this lake uh, just under a couple of weeks ago been reasonably generous with the bait offerings because um, the fish do tend to feed quite heavy after spawning and, and to be fair um, there's been a few fish that have come out in the, in the week before us arriving here so let's hope that continues. Well, here we go. Not the intended angler to catch, but it's perk of the job as I get to get the rods out on these sort of places. But uh, backed up everything Jay was saying yesterday about the weed. We uh, were fishing in the weed throughout the day and then finding clearer patches in the uh, evening. We went out in the boat yesterday and Jay showed me a few spots which have done fish before. And this one slipped up on one of those patches. So thanks to Jay for showing me the, the areas and also helped me get the, the rig out by using the boat and things. because. Uh, I'm never very good with a boat, so without his help, this probably wouldn't have gone out as smooth as it did. And at quarter to five this morning, this one absolutely rattled off. So, proof in the pudding, they came out of the weed and had a bit of a feed. But uh, happy days, hopefully it's still time for Jay to get one. He's about to go, so we'll get him back. Right, it's uh, morning time now. Um, it's been really, really tough going on this session. Uh, we, we couldn't have put in really um, much more effort. Um, all, all of the spots are good. Um, pre bait presentation is great, um, it's fish showing over all of the spots so it's a bit of a frustrating one um, but it's made a little bit sweeter by the fact that Joe's managed that common. Um, pretty chuffed to see a fish on the bank uh, after all, all the work really. Um, can't even be annoyed or angry about it because if you've done everything right and you're happy with everything and there's no regrets about how you fished, if, if you haven't got a bite then couldn't have done any more, wouldn't have changed anything. Um, but you know, we, we were just spotted a, a few um, groups of fish starting to shoal up. So we, we are wondering um, if with the warm weather we've had um, over the last couple of days, they're, they're just kind of looking to um, spawn again. They only, they only spawned a couple of weeks back, but sometimes you'll see um, a couple of quick spawns in succession. So um, perhaps that might be an explanation. I, I would have expected more fish, um, but yeah, not meant to be, but it's been a good session all the same. Right, so carp love weed. So carp absolutely love weed. Carp absolutely love weed. <laughs> carp absolutely love the weed. Um, on a sunny, uh, um, carp absolutely love the weed. On a sunny day, you're guaranteed to find carp basking in the weed.